Hello, Forecaster here again, and we are back for episode 59 of the Railcraft server Let's Play. And now let's get this dial moving, shall we? So uh, it's going to be a little trickier to update that. So we're going to use the same function that we used to update the, the uh, readouts. Uh, but we're going to need the uh, uh, the we're going to need the date and the time separately. So going to be like this. And then we are going to uh, we're going to need to figure out a way to parse the time into a number that we can get a percentage out of. So we have basically we have 24 hours we can't really parse it. Actually, what we can do is we can split, if we split it, uh, by the semicolon, We'll have hours uh, minutes and seconds like that. And then we can we know that um, The total is going to be seconds is pretty straight. Then we're going to need minutes, minutes times 60 plus uh, hours times 60 times 60. And that will give us the total number of seconds. And um, let's see. I don't remember how many seconds there are in a day or in 24 hours. So we have 24 hours times 60 is 1,440 minutes. And then times 60 again gives us 86,400 seconds in a day. So the uh, we want to get the uh, core for the uh, the quadrant core. So we'll call it uh, time dial core. Then we'll do document get elements by ID. And then the time dial core, core style transform should be equal to rotate. And then we probably want to negate it. And then we're going to have um, the total number of seconds currently divided by 86,400 plus uh, degrees and then end parenthesis. That should work, I think. Yeah, okay. Um, hmm. 
Hmm. It's not night currently. Let's unpause the world and see what happens. Oh, okay. Mm, no, that's that's not right. That's not right at all. Oh dear. Um, well, pausing the world again. Uh, nothing much happened there on that side. Uh, let's do this. Let's bring this down to every uh, every five seconds. So every five thousandth uh, millisecond. And we will have it print out this. Oh, right. This will be a percentage decimal. And we need to multiply that by 360 degrees first. That's probably what was going on. Let's bring that up again. Okay, Let's start that out. Uh, it's still erratic. That's not what I want. Okay. Let's uh, print this out. Before we do anything with it. And I actually want to take this, put that into a, another variable first. And then we're going to console info that printed out so that we can see. We'll open up the console. That's rather high for a percentage. Hmm. Well, that's clearly wrong. What am I doing? What is the total? I might have thought completely wrong about this. It is quite likely since it's not working. Okay. What is that? Why does it have a zero in front of it? That can't be right. Oh, does it? Right. Um, we need to parse int on these. Because it is interpreting some of them as strings. Now I'm probably I probably don't have to do it on these that I'm multiplying because it would convert them to number automatically, but it's not converting the seconds correctly at least. Okay, that's a little more reasonable. Right. Now uh, let's delete these again and we can start the world. So yeah, uh, let's set the time to a bit later. Set time to morning, no, day, Should set it to the beginning, or just later. Okay, is it not setting the rotation at all now? It is, that's the wrong one. It's apparently not updating it. Oh, right. Let's do that. Well, it's still not doing anything. Am I doing it wrong? Did I get did my time dial core is time dial core. That should be correct, right? 
Shouldn't be setting rotation for that. But it's not. That's very odd. It's setting it for that. That's what it should look like. Did I do something wrong? I'm guessing I did something wrong. Oh, right. Whoops. There we go. Okay, now see, that's not right. I... Well, it's moving. Um, I think it needs to be offset because it's not synced correctly because the sun is currently going down. Also, should it be rotating the other way? Yeah, I think the issue is that it's rotating the wrong way. We might actually want this one to be positive. Now that's not right either. Well, it's it's rotating the right way. But I think what we need to do is add 180 to the degrees. Because the sun is currently going down. Um, in the world so it's it was it just wasn't synced correctly now the light level is going down all right now pretty much all we have left is the um, the brain indicator and that's basically just a true or false value. The um, the brain is either zero or fifteen, and that's it. Um, or weather. I guess I should call it rain because it's it's technically only rain. It doesn't differentiate. It would be nice if it differed between rain and storm. Um, I wonder also if, um, let's have a quick look, see if the weather two mod has a sensor of some, to some type. Weather deflector. Um, well, there's the weather radar, which I am guessing does something. Ooh. Okay. That's not exactly what I was expecting. I'm guessing that is supposed to display something like it's an actual radar. I was hoping for something more like a sensor. Or a, a detector, which I guess is kind of the same thing. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's not really uh, helpful, is it? Because it would kind of be neat to be able to tell, although I guess they are local, so it would only detect storms, uh, whether two storms at spawn and hurricanes and or uh, twisters and such. So, yeah, I I don't think that's 
useful anyway. Better to just detect the global weather and be uh, satisfied with that. Okay, so let's do the weather thing. So I guess we are going to add another thing. Okay, yeah, let's let's just put another div here and we'll ID it as weather container. Um now I think what we want to do is just get like a rain symbol. No, not symbolism. Just a literal symbol. Um, so, want something that just shows that it's raining. That's fancy. Um, but I also want something that can that I can toggle to show that it's not raining. Um, let's let's search for a weather icon set. Something like this. Uh, but more neutral. Uh, can I need to uh, tools want to specify transparent uh, something like this would work uh, uh, let's see yeah I guess I guess these would work uh, they are dark though. Could probably simply invert them. Let's uh, let's download this. So we'll view the image because I don't want to go to that site really. And then I'm going to save this. Uh, I'm going to, well, I'm going to put it in the project uh, development, and then I have it under web, and then forecasting services, and then we'll call it weather.png, and I am going to have to I mean let's let's pop into here first so now it sh should show up there so this is it um, if we set style background URL uh, weather PNG do that and then we can close these. Right, it doesn't have any size, of course. So, well, it has width, apparently. Uh, width, uh, let's actually set height to 100 pixels. Width, 100 pixels. Huh. Okay. Is that oh right? Probably helps if the if it has the image on the server too, because it doesn't automatically send it. So now, if we set the height to 100 pixels, there we go. So that's that's decent, but I kind of want them to be brighter than that. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot up Photoshop. And it's going to be pretty easy to edit because it is uh, transparent. So we just need to preserve the alpha channel and we can just change the color of all of the icons. So once uh, Photoshop boots up, we can do the we can do that. Uh, now what we have here is basically a sprite sheet. Um, we have uh, each of these icons are in a specific position, and it looks. I mean, I don't really have a way to measure this. Uh, but what we can do, okay, computer is not responding while Photoshop is booting up. It takes a lot of resources, I guess. Um, right, but now it's booted up, so let's open the file in it, and I can actually... show that I guess now I dragged it over here I think it should treat it as a regular drop from the file system so there we go uh, the nice background I've set to show transparency clearly um, so they're kind of grayish I have no idea is that supposed to be a snowflake Hmm. Anyway, um, they're about seventy, sixty, eight-ish. About seventy across each icon, so we can we can work from that. But let's lock the transparency, and then we're going to select. A nice pure white color and then I'm just going to hit alt backspace to fill and then it's going to fill in everything that isn't transparent simply and then I'm going to save it and that's that so now if we go back to the screen we can re-upload this then do a cache refresh just in case and we set the height to 100 pixels and now they are white nice okay so um, let's did I make let's make a CSS file or a style sheet called styles weather and then in here we're going to have a class called uh, weather icon and the background of this is going to be that same uh, file obviously and then the width is going to be 80 pixels and the height is going to be 80 pixels uh, then we are going to get rid of this and in here we're going to create a weather icon and we also need to include that file here of course uh, so now we have a single weather icon here I'm it's not it's not quite centered um, let's adjust the width I think that's better 
the height is not the same. Okay, let's try that. Uh, so, we can adjust the background position. Um, So we have these two values basically, and we have um, positive and negative. So if we shift this 70, then it changes to uh, another icon. So basically, we are going to have some definitions here. So we're going to have. Uh, class called sunny, which is going to have the background position set to that value. That was the sun icon, obviously. And I'm pretty sure you can you can guess what I'm doing or going to do. And then we want the um, moon icon for night. Because we don't have to be, um, just display a moon or a sun or a rain cloud. We can be a little more creative than that. We can make it so that if it's, uh, if it's clear during the night or if it's clear during the day, it displays a sun. If it's clear during the night, it displays a moon. If it's raining during either, it displays a rain cloud. However, if it's raining during the winter, it will display a snow cloud instead, which we had examples of in the file. So we have the moon there. Um, now I'm looking at the sheet. Um, and we want to go two down and all the way to the right to get our rain cloud. So first, we are going to go down. So that's one. That's two. So there, about ish. And then we want to go to there. Well, just that. And that is going to be our rainy. Like that. And finally, we're going to want the snow one. And we actually have two variants of these. Uh, we have some that are filled in, and we have one ones that are hollow like the ones we're looking at right now. Uh, I'm actually I'm going to stick to the hollow ones. Uh, so for the final one, we're going to want to go down one row. And then there. That is our snowy Um, there we go. Fix that spelling mark. Um, spell check. Okay, so now that we have that set up, we have this thing. Uh, we can have it be sunny, or we can have it be. snowy, and so on. Um, is there a background scale? Background? No. Hmm. You can size the background based on the containing elements. Oh, there it is. Background size. OK. Um, 100%. Oh, geez. Uh, 
Oh, okay. That's slightly interesting. Hmm. Well, whatever. Um, let's pop the weather container. Uh, all the way over here for now. And then we want some down. I'll probably want to make this bigger. And that's another thing that I'm going to look at off camera. Uh, because it's going to require a bunch of fiddling and testing and hammering out the values needed to scale the background correctly with the uh, just increasing the element size is not going to do it uh, and we don't have time for that because we are out of time but uh, we are quickly going to we're going to overdraw a bit so update weather data and now we have some stuff. So uh, let weather icon. Uh, so we're going to get our icon. Um, yeah. And we are going to uh, document get. We're going to have to put in some if statements. So if data um, winter is greater than zero, do this. Else, do this stuff. So if data weather equals to zero, um, then weather icon class name is going to be equal to sunny. Otherwise, it'll be raining. And we want it to be uh, snowy because we are in winter. Uh, however, we want another if statement here that says, oh, wait. Mm hmm. How do we figure out if it's night or not? Uh, we could have the percentage we get here. Uh, let's do function uh, day percentage and then accept data. And then we're basically going to do this, all of this stuff. Actually only up to there. In here. Dang it, like that. And we're actually going to return this decimal value we get from doing that. And then that is going to do that pretty much. Right, we don't want this in there. That can go out there. Um, and then we can reuse that here. So time day percentage data. If that is greater, now how would it be? Would 50%, would above 50% be day or night? Uh, let's let's take a stab. Let's say if it's greater than 0 0.5, then it's night. 
otherwise it is day and can flip that if necessary. Now, if it's not winter, actually, this is a bit unnecessary, isn't it? Um, we only need that one check here. If it's if it's winter, otherwise rainy. So now we are going to add this check to here. Send in data and then refresh. And it is indeed currently sunny, I guess. I guess, yeah, it's it's not winter, it's summer. Now, if I do, now I am in a desert, but toggle down fall should work, I think. So now this is powered but it's not updating the that doesn't actually say if it's raining or not it hasn't updated the oh right well that explains that so weather icon is null oh Whoops. Why did I add that to that? That was not intention what was intended. Okay, that's a little that needs some adjustment, clearly. So now if we toggle down fall again, and you don't need to see that, it should. Yeah. As soon as the signal it took a while for the uh, weather sensor for the weather to actually change in game. But as soon as the signal went off, the page updated. Ooh, okay, that's some invalid JSON being sent or received somewhere there. Anyway, we have gone a fair bit over time, so I'm going to end the episode here before I go on another tangent. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to, I'll do some work to finish this up, uh, get it looking a bit nicer. Uh, position things correctly and such in the uh, and then in the next episode we should be able to finish up and deploy it onto the actual server so with that I will see you then